What's going on, you guys? If you're first time here to... Okay, let's run back. <laughs> run back, run back. Yo, what's going on? If you're new to the channel, my name is Angelo. If you're a returning subscriber, what up? Thank you for coming back. Anyways, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I like to approach a black and gray tattoo. And for this one, it's gonna be the Lady of Justice. And we're gonna be going through the needles I like to use, the mags I like to shade with, and also we're gonna be doing white highlights and how I like to approach that too. I hope you guys like the video and thank you. All right, you guys, so usually for this part of the tattoo, I like to look at the arm and kind of uh, take some photos of it to where um, I could go into like a Photoshop to see what certain images can work and what can't. With this piece, we found like um, a hand like kind of under her face with the balance beams, like it would work a lot better on that uh, area. But we had to put this stencil on quite a bit of times just because like it was throwing it off a little bit. And it, it was just, a, it was kind of a hard spot to, um, to put the stencil. But once it was tattooed, it looked very natural. It looked like it worked perfectly. Like, but yeah, definitely trying to put it on. It, it was kind of a tough task, but we did figure it out. And uh, see, like right here, I'm like, nah, we gotta move it a little bit. We gotta do this, do that. So I wanna say we put the head on maybe three times. And then this part with the hand with the balance beam, man, we put that one on like at least seven times. So this is gonna be our drop solution. All right, so with the outline, usually I like to outline everything with a seven liner. In this situation, we're doing a five liner just because um, I wanted to get it a little more crispy, like on the elbow area around that. So I'm using a five liner right here. The, the needle I'm using is a Cheyenne and, um, and I'm using like a gray wash right now. So I'm using about like, like the second to the last cap and just kind of outlining everything. So my stencil doesn't go away and um, around here in this area, if you're like trying to wipe, the the, uh, the stencil kind of comes off a little bit quicker. So I wanted to take my time and kind of just make sure I outlined everything. And if you guys can see, I'm, I'm stretching out the skin. I always try to make sure I stretch out the skin. Um, a good technique that I like to use is called the three point stretch. And it's, I'll use two of my fingers to stretch out the skin. Then I go with my palm and then I stretch that out too. So that's three, three point, and then, I, and then I'll just go into what, whatever I'm doing. This piece was actually really fun to do. It was, uh, it was challenging just because of the placement on how we had to do it. But the more I was tattooing, the more it was like, you just kind of start to get a feel for it. You, you start to kind of understand the texture of that part of the skin. Cause I don't know, like, if you guys ever tattooed like an elbow, you understand that it's it's a way different type of texture. Also with the knees, they're almost like the same type of texture. You got to stretch it out a little bit more and be a little more more slow when you when you want to tattoo like the elbow or that it, just those kind of parts. And um, the mags I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using. So let me just go through all the liners and, and the mags that I'm going to be using for this part. I'm gonna be using a five liner, a seven liner. I'm gonna use white highlights with a seven liner. And then I'm gonna be using a seven mag, a 13 mag, uh, a 17 mag, and a 23 mag. So, so right here, I'm just gonna be using the, uh, I'm gonna be using the 13 mag and I'm just kind of doing a background shade just to kind of make it not look so like it's like a, a 
it's just floating right there. I want to make make it have like like a background, you know. And I'm going I'm going very slow, trying to you know get all of the all of the uh, the ink into the skin, but I'm definitely not trying to overwork the skin. <clears throat> my buddy I tattooed, shout out to my boy Trevor. He he works out in LA. He does awesome videography. He's the shit he does is just phenomenal. Also, he works at No Jumper too. If you guys know what No Jumper is, got, yeah, he, things, he's a cool guy. I actually met Trevor from skateboarding a long time ago. So now that what he's doing, good for you, dude. That's what's up, dog. Keep doing that. But um, anyways, now we're starting to get into the hand. And we're just gonna be doing the background of the hand right here. So I did, I like to do like a tone usually coming off of like whatever image that I that I try to do. So for this one, uh, on the top, it was, it was like about like half cap full black. And then when I started to go lower, it was about the second cap. And I wanna say I was using a bigger Mac for this part. This one right here, this was a this one was a nine mag. My bad. I did use a nine mag in this. And you could tell like just taking my time with all that. Those little outlines right there, that's from the chain. I I wanted to do those like solid black. And I like to like, just like drag the mag too. Just take my time, kind of, kind of do that. I'm using a machine with a wireless battery pack. I don't know if you, if anyone has tried that yet. If not, I would highly suggest it. It makes you uh, feel like you could probably stand up and do more different other like, like. Uh, angles or whatever i catch myself standing up and walking around and i'll have my machine in my hand so yeah right here we're just that, that's just the chains and all that so right here this is a 17 mag and like i said i just wanted to do a tone i want to make sure i always want to like uh talk about when I shade off of something I always try to get right to where the line is and shade off of it if I need to I, I try to not really um, like you can see right here like I wanted to make sure that I got on the line and shade it off to where there's no little gap no little awkward gap of um, what is it called I don't even know what it's called no a little gap of skin from the other side. You could just see right here. If that didn't make sense, forget about it. Let's keep it going. But uh, yeah, right here I'm just trying to do a full tone, just outlining it. These chains, they were actually hella fun to do. Like, I don't know, just doing the whole tone for this, it, that, that was fun. And like I said, it was it was a little bit challenging in this area. So this I want to say this was probably like my eighth or ninth time tattooing the elbow. And each time you just understand and learn new things. I would not suggest going straight into tattooing the elbow, just like I would not suggest going straight into tattooing the neck or like what else would be another hard spot? Um, the knee. Probably the head because it has a weird texture of like, even when you shave the skin, you, you still feel the hair there. So like, I think the easiest spots to kind of learn how to tattoo if you were gonna tattoo on someone would probably be the thighs, the upper thighs because the skin's already stretched out if you had them, have them sit down and have like your, you know, like it's already stretched out. That I think that'd be the easiest to try to practice with someone. And then right here, now we're just starting to do the hair. And um, with the hair, I like to kind of have a motion. Like if I know wh which way the hair is going, then I'm gonna keep trying to play with that motion and keep going that way. 
And here's another spot that I'm talking about that I like to make sure I go right onto the, the line and then shade off of that. And then um, usually for the outline for the hair, if I know it's just like a black square spot for it or uh, I'll outline that and then I'll start to shade and then I'll fill that in black and then keep, with hair, I like to drag the mag a lot. So I'll just be like, shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> now this is the top of the knuckles of the hand. And this is another good example on how I like to uh, make sure I get the shading right on the line and shade off of it. And right there, I'm, positive I just use solid black and just shade it off of it until we got to a certain spot and then I just use like a mid-tone and then shade it off of that but you can see still like I'm stretching the skin three-point stretch that's like the main thing I want to uh, emphasize whenever someone tattoos if you have a good stretch the skit the ink will go in a lot easier And this is just the 17 mag again. Just trying to take my time. Also, if you guys stay tuned for the end of the video, we're gonna, uh, well, I'm just gonna be announcing something kind of cool that I think it'd be fun for the channel. So stay tuned to the end of the video. Usually I outline everything before I shade around it but with this spot just because of where the area was I figured I'd just shade this whole spot real quick and then we would start to outline the actual hand and you guys can tell like I'm not trying to rush nothing I'm just kind of doing my thing just kind of taking my time there's no time limit to it you don't have to be the fastest tattoo artist as long as you produce some good quality, like, it's all good, you know? But I do know people that are pretty fast at tattooing and, and their quality is amazing, like. Right here, just starting to do the hair. Trying to get a little motion going on, like a little bit of waves. And I hear some more of the hair, but it's gonna be on the other side of the neck. And then that's like also with the, uh, shading some of the neck too. And that's just the five liner. I'm just outlining everything. Usually with hair, I like to outline certain little things here and there. I don't try to go too like, like too particular with it. I, sometimes I'll just, uh, I won't stencil all of the detail in the hair, but then I'll start to kind of do my own little freestyle of like little strands of hair and stuff. And that's kind of like what makes it like my own kind of twist on it. I was really stoked on how this hair came out right there. And then five liner again, but right here, I'm, I know I ended up doing like some solid blacks in the hair. So it makes it look like it pushes back a little bit. And then like that right there, like that's a little bit of solid black right there. And then usually like after all that, 
I'll go in with a mag and then I'll just tone over the whole thing. Sometimes I'll, I'll catch myself wiping the skin, but I do think it is better if you just pat the skin and get off all the excess like ink because uh, too, mu too much wiping it, it'll just start getting the skin more and more red and irritated. Like I have a bad habit of wiping the skin, but when I do remember, I make sure I try to pat the skin. Usually in the beginning of the tats is when I kind of am pretty strict on patting the skin. But when I've been tattooing like on the session for a minute. There's a lot of things that can help with uh, if someone gets red fast, like you can, uh, there's, I know people use witch hazel, it helps with the redness. I know Bactine helps with the redness. If you guys have any other things you guys use for when something gets too red, put it down in the comments, let me know. I'll try it out. And right here, we're still working on the hair, like the hair, there was a lot of hair, but like it was, it was a lot of detail. So I thought it would be cool to make sure like we get a lot of that. Then doing making sure doing the three-point stretch what helps too if like ink does start to fly everywhere or whatever like making sure you use like your Vaseline or, or whatever you guys use to uh, put ointment on while you're tattooing if you put that on and and then you tattoo it'd be it's less of it splattering everywhere and it kind of keeps it condensed into that little area don't, that, that doesn't mean cake it up though. Right here, I like to, uh, you could tell that I'm more letting the, uh, the needle kind of guide the area rather than putting the needle all the way into the skin. And now we're going to start doing the lips. With the lips, like the top part, mainly with all of this, I did like a bloodline to kind of shape the lip first. And then I started going in with the solids. bottom of the chin just outlining the bottom of the chin seven mag I mean seven liner that is a uh, that is the fifth 17 mag and then right here I just what I did first was shape out the uh, the the whole like the 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 chin the cheek i shaped it all up first before i started really committing to like actually shading it like right here it's almost like sketching And then now we're gonna be doing like under the nose. And sometimes like if I, I won't finish like a certain spot that I've been working on because it can also help to start, like for instance, this face, like I didn't fully finish the lips yet, but I wanted to keep adding other tones around the face. So I knew like, okay, this kind of needs more of this, this needs more of this. 
and uh, I didn't want to go too dark on certain spots so just just kind of building up on each spot like if I was to be like all right let's take a break and then he goes and looks at it he'll be like he'd probably be like well maybe we can shade this more this more this more but knowing like how I tattoo like I don't even mind because I already know when the tattoo is done everything's gonna be shaded so there's always that weird phase in tattooing when you're tattooing when something isn't completely finished and it can look kind of like oh this might need more of this this might need more of this but if you take your time and just make sure you do everything when you're done with the tattoo it will all be shaded and everything will be toned out just right so what i'm trying to say is don't try to rush on completing an area and keep keep working on it and then you start to overwork it take your time if you if you think you might need to shade something else so you can see a different tone then do that definitely take your time i jump around a lot with my tattoos especially right now you can see like i shaded some of the other side of the nose i did some solid blacks under the nose the the lips aren't finished shaded yet the bottom of the chin even the neck is not even finished shaded but I like to take my time and make sure that I'm doing it right. So right here, I used a 23 mag. And usually, like, if I am going to be doing, a, like, a face, I like to bring in a bigger mag because it covers more of the skin and gives it more of a smooth look rather than using a tiny little, like, a 7 mag or a 9 mag that doesn't cover as much of the skin. And then you'll start... And then it kind of, you'll be like, ah, 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 more and more. I know people that can do that though, but with the way I, that I tattoo, I like to use more of a bigger mag to cover more ground to shade it. And that is a, a Da Vinci curved mag. All of the mags I use are curved. I don't use any straight mags. I haven't used straight mags in like, like five years, but I wouldn't mind going back to try it out. The last time I used straight mags is when I didn't really know how to tattoo, so. <clears throat> so right here, we're gonna be doing the smoke. With smoke, I like to think of like a, uh, like C shapes when I do smoke. This is kind of how I think of it. Like, this is how my buddy Lo actually told me how to do it. And ever since then, he, I kind of just kind of make it my own. So he would say, um, think of like the letter C, think of C shapes, think of like a C, and then you, you do it like a backward C, and then another C. So it gives it like a, like a hook kind of thing. And ever since he told me how to like, kind of try to do it like that, I would do the C, but then I'd do like an extra little bump. And then, but it would still be a C, but with like some extra stuff. And then keep doing it like that. And then eventually, just that's how I started kind of forming my smoke on how I did it in here. And that's now just how I do my smoke. So, Lo, shout out to you. You're probably not even gonna watch the video, but shout out to you, dog. If you guys want to follow Lo, it's tattoos underscore by underscore. Nope, that's probably not it. Tattoos by Lo, tattoo underscore by underscore Lo. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be right here somewhere. Right here or right here or right here somewhere. He's a cool artist. He always is very critical. I'll send him a photo. I'll be like, dude, what do you think of this tattoo? And he'll be like, you probably messed up right here. You shouldn't have did this, 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 and this. But it's called constructive criticism. Low is always there. You need someone to help you out with some of the tattoos you do because it's only gonna better you. So you need you need to find someone that's not afraid to tell you you shouldn't have did this. You could probably try this next time. Then eventually you you end up asking them like a thousand times. And then all of a sudden you'll, you'll get back the response like, yo, that one's tight. Then you'd know, okay, maybe I'm kind of understanding this. So 
So now we're just doing the forehead right here. Trying to make like, I think we're, we're doing like the hair right here. So I did kind of like a little darker tone right there. Oh, this is the inner armpit. Oh man, I know this one, this part hurting. Sorry dog. But we had to get that hair in there. We did some of that hair and it's like, like you can even see like the armpit hair. So you know that like that was close. I was like right there. And we just did a tone too. getting right there it's a good thing we got that out the way though that way he didn't have to uh, get back in there and now that's the forehead now we're starting to shade the forehead And then now this is the, uh, what do you call that? The thing that covers the eyes, it's like a bandana, but not a bandana. Now we're starting to shade that, but what that's called. I can't believe, I don't know what it's called. People are gonna be roasting me. It's all good, it's all good. I can handle it. Hmm? Is it gonna work for that? I don't know. <laughs> now, we're, see, this is what I was talking about. I jump around a lot. I'm going back to the beginning of the tattoo where I even, this is the hand. Now we just started t tattooing the hand again. I tried to keep this hand pretty light too, so it, it kind of stuck out. Like, you, it wasn't like basically the same tone as the background, and then it's kind of like, you don't, you know, you can't really separate everything from it. Now we're starting the white. So with the white, I use the seven liner and I'm just kind of finding the spots that are gonna emphasize certain images and areas. Like with the balance beam, I put the whites in there, make it look like it's kind of shiny. With the, uh, with the chains, I put it in the chains to help it pop out. And then I also, I would put it on like some of the hair strands to make that pop out also. And you can see he gets, he that's the elbow. So he started getting bloody and all that. Like it is what it is. Like, you know, it's totally normal for people to bleed during a tattoo. Like I hear people all the time. I don't, I never bleed during a tattoo. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's another subject, whatever. But yeah, so now we're, we're outlining with, uh, just a seven liner using the white highlights on the elbow. And then so with the lips, I'll emphasize them with like shading a little bit under and also with the hair. If I want something to make it look like it's more of like a, like a, like pop it out more, I'll do that. I 
I usually don't put any white in my smoke. It's, it's like kind of rare, but I have done it before. I've seen some people do it too. It looks pretty cool with certain, well, on certain things. So this is the hair right here on the top that I wanted to put. Oh, that was a cool uh, little, basically slow-mo of it. And then after I was done with certain parts of the white, I, I could see like, okay, maybe I want to put some more black in it. And that's what I did. Did a little bit more black, but then go back to the white. I used different needles for the, uh, for the white versus like using black because I don't want it to look kind of, you know, gray tone. Put some white in the nose, help it kind of emphasize it a little pop out. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. That's the finished tattoo. Um, if you guys could like, comment, and sus subscribe, that'd be awesome. Thank you guys. All right, so we just finished all my boy Trevor. Uh, five or six years, how long ago was it? Was it was like right when you started, I felt like. Like, okay, it could have been seven years ago, honestly. Probably like, like six. Six years, okay, it could have been six years ago. One of those, we did this one. This little California, and after six years, then we went ahead and we fucking blasted him. How's it feel? It feels tight, but it's actually funny, dude, because this one, I was like, it was small and it like, I wasn't, I wasn't all the way confident and like, cause you were just starting. Oh no. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So, no. like, I don't, I know, no, I'm sorry. No, like, it was just good. like, yeah, cause you I know? feel like you were just starting. So yeah, I was, I was like, just starting. And I, was... I had this empty spot and I just was like broken shit, but yeah, I no. just remember like, oh, he's just starting. I don't want to get like some, some crazy, you know what I'm saying? something like that. Yeah, yeah. so I just like, to see the progression now, yeah, I'm hyped, you know. Thank you for fucking yeah, yeah. the trust, bro. Definitely came a long way. Yeah, bro. Keep, bro. keep doing that shit, man. Thank you for coming through. How long did we? So we start. He came in at 10, 10, 10. He came in at 10, 10 because Juan fucking got me late today. But what time is it right now? So we just finished. <coughs> it's 9:38 and uh, started, like around one. started around one. So that's like almost eight hours of tattooing. That's what we got done. But yeah, once again, bro, thank you for coming through. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah, dog. Shout out Austin A. Uh, <laughs> the man behind the fucking camera, bro. We, were you talking? So Trevor just left. I've, we forgot to show the gifts that he gave me when he came through. But um, if you guys watch No Jumper, Trevor is a, a filmer for No Jumper. And he gave me one of the classic kendamas from No Jumper. And he gave me this dope ass shirt too. Boom. Hey Trevor, if you're watching this, thank you, bro. Thank you again. Fucking appreciate it, dog.